Hello amazing hackers, welcome back to the channel. Now yesterday we covered a tweet by a person called Stephen Lacey who did some excellent uh, detective work uncovering some kind of weird string leading to some kind of strange VPS uh, well, on some weird port running uh, if you guys remember Ooh, sorry about that there we go so we can see we have a URL here HTTP OVZ1 dot blah 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 dot VPS dot my Gino dot RU now um, it turns out that this was not malware now I want to give you guys an update still excellent research work don't let anybody fool you by the way turns out that this was just from a fork now let's read through the article <coughs> Thousands of GitHub repositories were copied with their clones altered to include malware, a software engineer discovered today. As you guys may remember from yesterday, just a small version bump of some software going from version 0.3.1 to 0.3.11 and then they tried to sneak that string in. Um, so while cloning open source repositories is a common development practice and even encouraged among developers, this case involves threat actors creating copies of legitimate projects but tainting them with malicious code to target unsuspecting developers with their malicious clones. If you guys don't know how GitHub works, you basically have a main what's called a branch which is where your code lives that's the main part of the code and when people want to develop something they can take a fork of it they can develop on it they can create a branch on it uh, and then they can merge it back into master or they can move on with their own fork and in this case a lot of forks have been taken with this specific text string in them GitHub has purged most of the malicious repositories after receiving the engineer's report. And that is true if you go look on GitHub, and we saw this in our video yesterday as well. These uh, items were swiftly removed. 35,000 GitHub, pro 35, GitHub project not hijacked. Today, software developer Stephen Lacey left everyone baffled when he claimed having discovered a widespread malware attack on GitHub Attacking, affecting some 35,000 software repositories. Contrary to what the original tweet seems to suggest, however, 35,000 projects on GitHub have not been affected or compromised in any manner. Rather, the thousands of backdoor projects are copies, forks or clones of legitimate projects purposely made by threat actors to push malware. Official projects like Crypto, Golang, Python, JS, Bash, Docker, K8S remain unaffected. But that is not to say the finding is unimportant as explained in the following section. While reviewing an open source project Lacey had found off Google search, the engineer noticed the following URL in the code that he shared on Twitter. And that's the URL we've been going over bleeping computer like many observed that when searching github for this url there were indeed 35,000 search results showing files containing the malicious url therefore the figure represents the number of suspicious files rather than infected repositories but as we know from steven's tweets he did correct this himself as well we further discovered out of the 35,788 code results, more than 13,000 search results were from a single repository called Red Hat Operator Ecosystem. This repository, seen by Bleepy Computer this morning, appears to have now been removed from GitHub and shows a 404 not found. It did a few days ago already. Oh, sorry, a few days. It was just yesterday. The engineer has since issued cor uh, corrections and clarifications to his original tweet. Malicious clones equip attackers with remote access. So a developer James Tucker pointed out that cloned repositories containing the malicious URL not only exfiltrated the user's environment variable, but additionally contained a one-line backdoor. Exfiltration of environment variables by itself can provide a threat actor with vital secrets such as API keys, tokens, AWS credentials and crypto keys where applicable. As you guys know, if you create a project, you should never 
check in your credentials directly, but instead use environment variables. And of course, when those can be read, that's a problem. But the single line instruction, line 241 above, further allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code on systems of all of those who install and run malicious code. Now, if we look at this, this seems like a shell that's being spun up. So that, of course, we have a reverse shell in the back end running. Unclear timeline. As far as the time, oh, sorry. As far as the timeline goes, we observed deviating results. The vast majority of cloned repositories were altered with the malicious code sometime within the last month, with results ranging from six to thirteen days to twenty days ago. However, we did observe some repositories with malicious commits dated as far back as 2015. So to show an example here, and that's what I meant by bumping that version with just a little bit, they're going to require that specific URL to be included with Node, as you can see, uh, and that's going to, of course, pull in that malicious code. The most recent commits containing the malicious URL made to GitHub today are mostly from defenders, including threat intel analyst Florian Roth, who has provided Sigma rules for detecting the malicious code in your environment. Ironically, some GitHub users began erroneously reporting Sigma's GitHub repo, maintained by Roth as malicious on seeing the presence of the malicious strings for use by defenders inside Sigma rules. GitHub has removed the malicious clones from its platform as of a few hours ago when releasing that article, of course, Bleeping Computer can observe. GitHub's security team also issued a statement. So <clears throat> if you guys don't follow this Twitter account yet, it's a good idea. I'll put both links to the article and the GitHub uh, security Twitter account in the description, where they say that the investigations were made, no repositories were compromised, malicious code was posted not the repo to clones, not the repositories themselves. And the clones were quarantined and there was no evidence of compromise of GitHub or maintainer accounts. As Beck's best practice, remember to consume software from the official project repos and watch out for potential typo squads or repository forks slash clones that may IP appear identical to the original project but hide malware. Now, as you guys have been on GitHub, sometimes you can see clones that are almost identical and you don't know which one to take exactly. Make sure that you research the original developer and not just blindly take one because for all you know, it might include malicious code in there. This can become more difficult to spot as cloned repositories may continue to retain code commits with usernames and email addresses of the original authors giving off a misleading impression that even your commits were made by the original project authors. Open source code commits signed with GPG keys of authentic project authors are one way of verifying the authenticity of code. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, because there has been a retweet of somebody saying that was just a bug bounty effort, which is highly, highly, highly irresponsible. If you guys ever do anything with bug bounties and stuff like that, don't push anything into the public domain like this with remote code execution or even just including those kinds of links. Make sure that you are very, very aware of what you're doing. And in this case, it might have been, it might not have been. I guess time will tell. I'll keep you updated if new news comes out about this. But just make sure that whatever you do when you include a project from GitHub, that you include the original project and not a fork or a clone. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. And I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.